This program does not provide medical advice. We assume no liability for the information provided on MindForce Radio. Please consult your physician before beginning any exercise or nutrition program. This is Roger LaPointe, and I have known Bob Whalen for many years at this point, and he is one of the most intense individuals you will ever meet. Go Mind Force Radio. From Mind Force Radio, this is Natural Strength Night with Maximum Bob. On Natural Strength Night, we don't talk about the other things Bob likes to talk about. Tonight, we only talk strength training. When I say strength training, I don't mean training like punk-ass goons in the muscle magazines who jacked up on juice, steroids, and PEDs. I mean natural strength. Strength built on good food, heavy weights, and no shortcuts. If you want to learn about real natural strength, weight training the right way, the old school way, stick around. Bob and his friends just might teach you something. He's here, the host of Natural Strength Night, Maximum Bob Whalen. All right, on tonight's show, we have some questions that I'm going to be answering. Some emails from listeners. First one is from Eric from Washington, D.C. I play high school football and I can't seem to gain weight no matter how much I try. None of my supplements work and I spend hours working out, but I can't seem to get my weight over 150 and I'm 5 foot 10. Please give me some advice. Let me first say that this advice is not for everyone. You know, most people on here, because as soon as you say something, then you're going to get all kinds of emails from people saying, how could you recommend that? Well, listen to what I'm saying, and then you'll see why. I'm not telling everyone to do this. Um, This is a high school football player, so who wants to get bigger and gain weight? If you're a 45-year-old businessman, you shouldn't do this, okay? (laughs) So, Eric, this is what I recommend that you do. You're trying to get bigger. You're trying to get stronger for playing football, and you can't seem to gain weight. So, first of all, I would say throw your supplements away, okay? They're a waste of money. Uh, what you got to do is eat more. Uh, forget the weight gain stuff. Forget the protein powder. You have to eat a lot more food, and hopefully your parents are on board because they're going to have to buy you <laughs> a lot of meat and chicken and fish and vegetables. That's what you need. We'll talk about the uh, the weight training after this. I'm first going to go over the food part. So you got you got to eat a lot more, and you have to start eating three dinners a day. Okay, forget this cultural breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, you know, no more sandwiches for lunch. I mean, I know sometimes you have to because you can't control where you're going to be. You might have to have a sandwich, but it, if at all possible. Try to have three dinners a day, knife and fork meals. And for breakfast, forget cereal, okay? You have to eat dinner for breakfast. And uh, and don't tell me that you can't. Well, stay, stay little then, okay? If you can't do it, stay small. If you can't do it, stay weak. If you want to make excuses, stay 150. Okay, you want to get bigger, you want to get stronger, you're willing to do what I tell you, it's going to work. But don't give excuses about how you can't do it. You know, you're going to say, well, I can't eat that for breakfast. Well, stay 150 then. Okay, this is what, if you want to get bigger, this is what you do. Okay, first of all, breakfast. What law says you have to have cereal for breakfast? What law says you have to have oatmeal or whatever? Are you going to get arrested and put in jail? Are the police going to come to your house and arrest you if you have Chicken, roast beef, steak, broccoli, cauliflower, salad, green beans for breakfast. Are you going to get put in jail? 
Okay, then, then why don't you do it? Okay, that's way better than having cereal. And you can't skip breakfast. So if you want to get bigger, you want to get stronger, and you're willing to do what it takes, naturally I'm talking about, naturally, not, not using drugs, the natural way, willing to do what it takes, have dinner for breakfast. No excuses. If not, stay 150. Okay, for lunch, same thing. For dinner, repeat. So you're going to have three dinners a day. Tons of vegetables, tons of protein. And since you're in high school, you don't got to worry about the same type of things that adults have to worry about. So you, you basically just can pig out. You can have potatoes, rice, whatever you want in addition to your lots of vegetables, lots of chicken, lots of meat. Okay, in between your meals, that's when I recommend that you have some type of a protein snack. And I've written, you know, the staple of lots of bodybuilders and power lifters and natural lifters and wrestlers and all kinds of athletes. It's only because we're too lazy to cook or it's more convenient. It's the can of tuna. Okay, but I'm not recommending that you have to have tuna. It's just because it's convenient. I mean, it's actually more healthy if you don't have it out of a can because there could be some negative consequences of just eating it out of a can. And the more you read later about anything in a can might not be good for you. So I'm not saying have cans of tuna, but if it's more convenient, do it. Uh, otherwise, just... Go to Costco or Sam's or something and get one of those big bags of chicken breasts. And you can cook them all at once and have a, a chicken breast between breakfast and lunch as a snack. And a chicken breast or a piece of fish between dinner, uh, your lunch dinner and your dinner dinner. <laughs> so, so you can have a dinner for breakfast, a dinner for lunch, a dinner for dinner and some type of a protein snack, like a chicken breast or a can of tuna, in between your breakfast dinner and your lunch dinner and your, and your lunch dinner and your dinner dinner. Okay, so you got that? Now, the next thing, you got to cease all liquids except for milk. Okay, so no more soda, no more, no more juice. Okay, from now on, you're going to be drinking whole milk. So, and try to work your way up to a gallon a day. And if you say, I can't do it, then stay 150 then. Okay, so don't, don't be giving me these you can't. Yes, you can do it. You might be pissing 20 times a day, but you can do it. Okay, so if you want to get bigger, you want to get stronger, do that. Okay, the next thing is get the book Super Squats. It's written by Randy Strauss, and it's one of the greatest books you can read. Uh, so get that book. You can go to Amazon and get it. Or you can go to uh, Iron Mind uh, Enterprises and get it. That's Randy's website. I think it's, uh, uh, you can Google it, but I think it's ironmind.com. And uh, get the book Super Squats. So for your training, you got to start doing what the book says, okay? 20 rep squats, and uh, you you got to be using weight that you can... Uh, that it's going to be a, a difficult to do 20 reps. I mean, you basically try to get a weight that you normally would do for 10 and then work your way up to 20. And uh, do those once a week. I would also try to do trap bar deadlifts once a week. I would cut down my workouts to, to two a week. It sounds like you might be going to the gym too much. If you're trying to get bigger and stronger, going to the gym less but lifting heavier and getting better recovery is better for you. So that's what I would do. I would cut my workouts down to two whole body workouts. I would do the 20 rep squats once a week, read the book, uh, super squats, do trap bar deadlifts once a week, do squats once a week, and then uh, do a major push and a major pull movement in each workout. And you could alternate it. I mean, it just depends on, you know, what... If I met you, I could give you better details, but since I, um, I'm not seeing you, I'm just kind of giving you the minimum more than the maximum. But 
you could do a horizontal and vertical push on both workouts. It just depends on on you and how much of an easy gainer or a hard gainer you are and or how good your recovery is, your genetics and things like that. But since I since I'm not looking at you and aren't asking you more questions, I'd just say do a, a major pushing movement on one workout, like a vertical and then do like a major pushing on the other workout, probably a horizontal. Uh, and then the same with the pull. You could do a, a major pull in each workout. You could split it so it's one horizontal, one vertical. And then do an, a neck uh, a neck exercise and an ab exercise on each workout. So basically, you're going to do a push, a pull, a leg, an ab, and a neck on each workout. And that could be it. But if you if you still feel... Uh, like you can train more, you're not exhausted, you know, you can throw in a few isolation movements. Um, but for now, that's what I would do. I would work out twice a week, whole body, 20 rep squats one day, trap bar the other day, a major push and a major pull, and uh, an ab and a neck, throw that in there with it. And keep good records, um, you know, write everything down, look at your records, learn from them, and then progress whenever possible, whatever the goal is. I mean, when you when you get the 20 reps and your your, your form is perfect on the squats, you're going deep enough. Um, add five pounds and re- repeat. And you're not going to get 20 every time. And you know the goal is 20. You might you might <laughs> you might not make it to 20 when you first add the the five pounds, but you work your way up to it. And then with all your exercises, it's the same thing. You have a goal. I would do. I would probably do two sets. Uh, you know, eight eight reps upper body, uh, eight to ten reps probably upper body, and uh, you know, yeah. And when you hit the goal in perfect form, if your form's not perfect, if you're if the last couple of reps you're kind of getting sloppy, don't add weight. You know, you only add weight when you're doing it in perfect form. Okay, and. If you have any more questions, just send me an email. Bob Whalen at naturalstrength.com. Okay, the next question is from Jake, who's from Fort Worth, Texas, and he writes, Bob, I'm not what you would call a hard gainer. I'm 22 years old. I love to train. I play college sports, and I want to know if it's possible if you could recommend a routine for a guy like me that is not um your typical uh hard gainer and uh I love training and I'm an athlete I'm blessed with good genetics and I want to know if it's possible to train with a routine where I could train 4 or 5 days a week hmm well see normally I don't like I don't like answering questions like this cuz then people uh you try to help the majority, right? But there are people like you, Jake. <laughs> yeah, there are people like you with good genetics. You're blessed, and you're an athlete. And I would say, you know, during the off season, during the off season, yeah, it is possible. Uh, even though it's not the majority, ninety percent of people this would not work for. But occasionally, it's good to answer questions like this because we say the same thing over and over and over again because we're writing for the masses. But there are young athletes like you who can train four days a week and some who can even train five days a week. If, I I wouldn't say anyone's six, but if you're natural, but I would say it's possible for 5% maybe of people who are just blessed with good genetics. You, You can do it four or five days a week if you split it properly. See, most people don't split the routine properly. They they do it by body parts, and that's what the problem is. If you do it by body parts, you're going to get muscle overlap. That's what I call it. It's because you can't split something on paper and have it really be split. I mean, what are you going to call bench press? A, a chest exercise? Well, it also works shoulders and triceps, but you're going to have shoulders on a different day. Well, you already work shoulders on the other day, too, so... You're going to have muscle overlap if you use uh, body parts, if you split it up that way. So you you can't split it properly with body parts. 
So if you're in the small percentage, I know I'm going to get all kinds of emails for answering this, but remember, this is for only the small 5%. Okay, 90%, you can ignore this. But if you're in that small percent of good genetic athletes, um, if you split it up into push-pull or upper body, lower body, that way you will get complete recovery. So suppose you go and you do upper body on Monday, Thursday. You do lower body on Tuesday, Friday. That is perfectly split. There's no overlap. So it's not as long as you're not overtraining and you're only doing it temporary, so I'm not saying do it year-round, but if you do it for four months or something during the off-season and you're young in your 20s, you're an athlete, yeah, I mean, that could be very beneficial. So upper body Monday, Thursday, lower body Tuesday, Friday, that would work great. You can also do it if, uh, push-pull, you know, as long as it's, it's totally separate. So it's push-pull or upper body, lower body. And that way there's no... Uh, no muscle overlap. Is it possible to do it five days a week? I don't like to, I'm not recommending this, but I mean, if if it's going to, if you're going to be in the gym anyways and you're going to do it, well, there's probably one way to do it uh, that could be beneficial if you're a young athlete with good genetics. That would be, and I've done this before, but when I was in my 20s, I did this, and it it worked okay, but I didn't stick with it long. I get better results when I went to the twice a week after reading and listening to Perry Rader. But the temporary possible way to do it would be push-pull legs off, upper-lower off. So you do, let's say, pushing on Monday, pulling on Tuesday, legs on Wednesday, Thursday off. So then the next day upper body, the next day lower body, the next day off. So it would be push, pull, legs off, upper, lower, off. Okay, so that could work, and I hope that answered your question. For 5% of trainees, it could be possible if you're a young athlete with good genetics, but it's not what I recommend for 95% of the listeners. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is not really a question. It's just one of my pet peeves. It's how there's a lot of people out there, even a lot of my friends, who are, uh, they claim to be anti-steroid. But then when you walk into their gym, <laughs> their walls are filled with pictures of drug, of drug users. You know, there's Mr. Olympia's picture on the wall and, um, everywhere you look in their gym, they get pictures of drug users. Or you get people who have websites, and you know they claim to be anti-drug, but their website's filled with uh, drug users. You know, or they have a magazine, and it's filled with drug users. So, do an inventory <laughs> of your stuff, whether it's your website, your gym, whatever. And if you really are anti-drug take the drug users off your wall okay don't have them in there replace them put something else get the old timers and put them on the wall okay anyways that's it for now uh we're going to take a break for some commercials pay the bills we'll be back with more right after this This segment brought to you by VitalNutritionStore.com. Did you know that more than 7 million Americans suffer from coronary heart disease, the most common form of heart disease? Regardless of your age or condition, adding Cardio for Life to your daily regime will dramatically improve your cardiovascular condition. Cardio for Life has been the top-selling Enlarger 9 product in the marketplace now for more than three years. It is also the top-selling product at VitalNutritionStore.com. Formulated by Dr. Harry Elwart, the best-selling author of Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today, Dr. Harry believes together we can prevent and reverse heart disease. Cardio for Life comes in three wonderful flavors, orange, peach, and grape, and is gluten-free, sugar-free, and sodium-free. Please see our complete line of natural products at vitalnutritionstore.com. That's V-I-T-A-L nutritionstore.com. 
Randy Roach shocked the world with the release of his first volume of Muscle Smoke and Mirrors several years ago. It was a masterpiece of over 500 pages with such in-depth research and detail that it was not only surprising, but shocking and mind-blowing. It was truly one of the best Iron Game history books ever written. He followed that with Volume 2, another epic book with over 700 pages of equal depth and detail. All serious Iron Game fans need to have these books. Please visit Randy's website at randyroach.ca. That's R-A-N-D-Y-R-O-A-C-H dot C-A. Listen to how Iron Game legend and the Iron Master editor, Osmo Kihaw, describes the book Supernatural Strength. Have you ever wondered how much real-world experience authors have when they write books about weight training? Who is that person behind the computer? What do they really know about the Iron Game? If you picked up this book, Supernatural Strength, you have definitely come to the right place. The author, Bob Whalen, has spent several decades in the Iron Game trenches training himself, competing and coaching in powerlifting, earning academic credentials too numerous to mention, and thousands of hours of training and instructing athletes and trainees of all levels at his Washington, D.C. gym since 1990. He's not only devoted his life to motivating and pushing people to heights they have never been to, but elevating the trainees understanding why certain methods work better than others. Bob is one of the most respected and revered trainers in the business today. This book is sure to surprise and amaze you at the same time. Order now at SupernaturalStrength.com. That's SupernaturalStrength.com. Don't you think it would be so much easier getting into shape if you had a personal coach? Just like all the celebrities do. Well, now you can. Bob Whalen of WebStrengthCoach.com wants to get you out of your rut and coach you to success. He's dedicated to helping you achieve your strength and fitness goals through your hard work and his expert guidance. Bob will help you with strength training, muscle building, fitness, nutrition, and motivation. He'll make sure you achieve your maximum physical potential. You can get one-on-one training with Bob through his website webstrengthcoach.com he will develop a personalized program tailored to your individual needs a program right for you bob will give you feedback after every workout this is old school fitness and nutrition no fads and no gimmicks bob will use proven natural techniques to make sure you are satisfied so visit webstrengthcoach.com today and let bob help you reach your best self webstrengthcoach.com Do you enjoy history without social engineering? Reading about our founding fathers? Economics from a capitalist perspective? Wisdom from modern patriots? Welcome to UncleSamBooks.com, where virtues like rugged individualism, hard work, and the American dream dominate. UncleSamBooks.com. Great books for homeschooling. UncleSamBooks.com. If you want to become as strong and muscular as possible with health in mind and without lowering yourself to using steroids, the best advice can be found in the classic strongman books of long ago. These are the best books ever written on the subjects of strength training, weightlifting, strongman training, iron game history, and old-time physical culture. Many of them can still be found at physicalculturebooks.com. There you will find good, Honest, time-tested wisdom from the great old-time strong men to maximize your natural muscular and strength potential. Please visit physicalculturebooks.com. Listen to Ken Manny, head strength and conditioning coach at Michigan State University, describe the book Iron Nation, a masterpiece text on some of the most intriguing and compelling personal stories, iron game history, and gut-wrenching training routines ever put to paper. If you truly love hard training without all the frills of pomp and circumstance so common today, you will love Iron Nation. Written by lifters for lifters. If you love weight training, you will love Iron Nation. Order now at ironnation.com. That's I R O N nation.com. If you would like to promote your business on Mindforce Radio, we would love to hear from you. Please let us know if you are interested in a 30 or 60 second voice commercial or a banner website ad. Please contact Bob using the contact information provided on MindForceRadio.com. You're listening to Natural Strength Night on Mindforce Radio. <laughs>
right, we're back. When I said push-pull legs off, upper, lower, off, at the very beginning when I said the push-pull legs, I think most people know this, but just in case, there's a few that don't. will avoid me getting some extra emails about it. The push and the pull at the beginning are just upper body, okay? So I didn't say it, but I figured it was obvious. But it's upper body push, upper body pull, then legs, then off, then upper body, then lower body, then off, okay? So that's it for that. Okay, so the first question is going to be to Dave in Fairfax, Virginia. And uh, he asks, what do I think of training cycles where you back way down in poundage and then build up, you know, adding a certain amount of weight per week for up to 20 weeks? Before I answer it, I, I want to say, like, when I give my opinion, you know, I don't care what you do, okay? If you like doing something... That's not the same thing the way I do it, that's fine. As long as you're training and you're trying to get stronger, then that's a good thing. So don't take it personal if uh, what I say you don't like. But this is what I do, and this is what I believe, okay? So I believe in progression by performance, not progression by time. I don't like... 20-week cycles. I don't like backing down on the weight and then building back up. To me, that's a waste of time. And in my opinion, you're never going to get real strong if you train that way. It's better than nothing. If you, if, you, if you can't train any other way, then go ahead. But in my opinion, you're never going to get real strong training that way because you're going to spend most of your year using warm-up weights. Okay, how... How many weeks of the year are you going to really be working hard? You know, you're only really working hard and lifting heavy in the last couple of weeks of that cycle. And then what do you do? You take a week or two off and then go back down again in the weight? To me, that's crazy. You're you're spending like 80% of your year either off or using warm-up weights. So to me, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, that's just me. Now, my opinion is you can't add weight by time. If you know that you're going to add five pounds a week, then the weight's way too light because you already know ahead of time that you can do it. Okay, if you're training hard, you don't know you can do it. You're, you're training as hard as you can, and if you hit the goal, then you can add weight. But you may not hit the goal for weeks. I mean, you're training hard. So that's, that's the way I train. I train hard all the time. Because you're going to get enough rest as it is built in. You don't have to plan for it. Plus, you're going to have things happen. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to get into a funk and miss a week or two just by accident. It happens to everybody. You, you're not, you're not a robot. I mean, things happen. So why you don't plan on it? It's going to happen by accident. You're going to miss days. Things are going to happen. So you just keep going. So if you're planning on training twice every seven to ten days. With everything else life is going to do to you, you're going to get plenty of recovery without planning on taking three quarters of the year off. Okay, if you're if you go on a steroid cycle, you can pretty much plan as the drugs kick in. You can add weight, you know, because as the drugs kick in, you're going to get stronger, and you can plan on adding the poundage per time as the drugs kick in. So that's a drug user philosophy okay but to me that doesn't work for natural people you can't tra- you can't plan on adding weight if you're natural you have to earn it you have to earn it yeah just like the old smith barney commercial you have to earn it you can't just plan on adding weight so to me long build up cycles there it's not the way i do it it's not the way i recommend but, you know, if that's the only way you can do it and you like it, fine. That's not the way I would do it, okay? The next question is from Bill in Des Moines, Iowa. He says, do you need to train to failure to get strong? Well, even though I advocate training to failure in most of my articles and with most of my clients, the answer is no. You don't need to train to failure to get strong. Um, 
the reason that I usually train to failure is because it's time efficient. You know, if you want to get a great workout in, in way less time, you know, you want to be done, you want to work your whole body in an hour or less, then training to failure is the way to go. And my clients, they're paying for me by time. So, so it makes <clears throat> way more sense to train them that way also. They come in, they're going to totally get a great workout, bust their butt, and be done in less than an hour. It's time efficient. So training to failure is the most time efficient way, the best bang for your buck way to train. You're not wasting time doing endless warm-up sets. You just come in, bang it out, one or two sets, and you're done with it. So it's, it's overall my favorite way to train, but you don't have to do it to get strong. It also depends on what your goal is. For some people, it's not the right way to train. If you're a strength athlete, if you're a shot putter, a discus thrower, uh, a power lifter, an Olympic lifter, a strongman competitor, anyone where you have to perform doing a one rep max, you're going to need to do a lot of warm-up sets. You, you need to do warm-up sets. So this is not the way to train if you're uh, if you're doing that. But for for most people who aren't strength athletes, it probably is the overall best way to train. But uh, do you need to do it to get stronger? No, you don't. The primary way to get stronger, no matter what type of routine you're doing, you know, no matter, no matter what philosophy you believe in, whether it's slow training or whether it's you know, what you call dinosaur training or what you call high-intensity training or odd object lifting, slow speed, fast speed, any kind of machine, free weight, whatever, the successful people are the ones who put the highest emphasis on poundage progression. That's why, I mean, you, you can find people that do any type of training. If they put their main emphasis on poundage progression, they're going to be successful. That's why Drew Israel trained slow for a while. He trained slow for a few years and got great results because he didn't change his philosophy. He didn't put his eye twitching and uh, or, he, or he breathed uh, uh, slightly off by a half millimeter of a second uh, or twitched his foot a second or found other, some excuse just not to add weight. You know, he, <laughs> he added weight, you know, on a regular basis, and that's why it didn't matter. He got strong. Okay, so you're going to find that no matter what type of training you do, there's, there's four ways to increase intensity, and the main way is poundage progression. But you can manipulate the other three ways depending on your philosophy, and, and different philosophies manipulate the other ways more or less. It just depends on you know, where they put the emphasis. But as long as they put the poundage first, it's going to be successful. But the four ways to increase intensity are increasing your poundage progression, doing sets to failure, using better form, and reducing rest between sets. But you don't really need to train to failure, and you don't really need to reduce the rest between the sets. You, sh you should always use good form, but the poundage progression is the key. Okay, That is the key to getting results. Now that's going to do it for tonight. Don't be a flamingo, you have to do your squats. Don't be a flamingo, real lifters work their legs. That's going to do it for this edition of Natural Strength Night on MindForceRadio.com. Please bookmark that website, MindForceRadio.com. Bob is always looking for new writers for naturalstrength.com who are old school, hardcore, write with passion and have a strong anti-steroid stance. He also wants your training questions so they can be answered on the show. Please send your articles and training questions to Bob at mindforceradio at earthlink.net. Thanks for listening. See you next time.